So first of all, let's talk about what is CISA. Well, the degree is called Certified Information Systems Auditor. It is a certification that's given by the Isaka Institute. All right. Now, this is content from Isaka's website directly, and it says that they have 151K plus certification holders. That's a huge number. And of course, the average salary of CISA holders, which probably all of us are interested in the most, is 100K US dollars. Okay, now that's a big, big number. So why should you go for CISA? If you go, uh, if you decide to go for it, what are the steps that you need to follow and where will it land you? Let's talk about that. Now, of course, you understand that this is a course that will make you skilled in information systems audit, IT security and control. So even IT professionals undertake this, not just the auditor uh, community. What difference it can make to you in terms of fields that will be offered to you after qualifying CISA. Information systems auditing process, governance and management of IT, information systems acquisition, development and implementation, information systems operations and business resilience, protection of information assets. These are different color opportunities for you if you see that what domain you can work in after getting a CISA degree. Coming to the next slide, what is the eligibility and, and what are the exceptions to that eligibility? Now, the Isaka Institute does not really require you to have a lot of degrees or have a lot of educational background before you decide to pursue something like CISA. But what it does require is a minimum of five years of professional information systems auditing control or security work experience. You know, uh, you can say these are the job practice areas that they prescribe you to have at least five years experience in. So what happens is usually it can be difficult for a person to get like up to five years of experience. So they have given four conditions where they can, you know, give a waiver of those five years but to a maximum of three years let's have a look at those you can say exceptions exceptional cases i have uh, given the whole information here so you can screenshot this slide and uh, this screen so that you know you have uh, something to refer for later let's talk about the exceptions a maximum of one year of information systems experience or one year of non-is auditing experience can be substitute, substituted of one year of experience. So a maximum of one year of experience in information systems audit or something similar can be substituted for one experience. This means that any other profile or domain you have one year experience that can be used and uh, you can get an exception of one year, all right? Second point, 60 to 120 completed university semester credit hours the equivalent of a two-year or a four-year degree not limited by the 10-year preceding restriction. It can be substituted or one to two years respectively of experience. Now, if you have completed 60 to 120 credit hours in your university or in your semester, now these can be substituted for one or two years respectively. It is upon Isaka Institute to decide. So you can write to them, you can tell them your situation and they will give you an appropriate waiver of one to two years for your completed university semester credit hours. Talking about the third point, a bachelor's or master's degree from a university that enforces the Isaka sponsored model curricula can be substituted for one year experience. And the list of these schools is at this website. I've given the link here. Now coming to the bachelor's or master's degree, if you hold a degree from these institutes that are given in this list, you can get a, an exception of up to one year. Okay. 
Now, this option cannot be used if three years of experience, substitution, and educational waiver have already been claimed. Makes sense, no? If you have already claimed three years of exceptional uh, experience or waiver, you cannot go for this option. Coming to the fourth point, a master's degree in information security or information technology from an accredited university can be substituted for one year of experience. Now, if you have a master's degree in the required domain, which is information security or information technology, you can get a waiver of up to one year. I've given examples here. You can refer these for you know better understanding and clarity. Let's come to the another slide. Yes, so let's talk about the course structure. The CSA course is divided into five modules. All right, and these five modules are here. The process of auditing information system, CISA's role in IT governance, CISA's role in systems and infrastructure life cycle management, CISA's role in IT service delivery and support, and CISA's role in protection of information assets. Now, if you are a professional who's already completed chartered accountancy from India, or you've completed the course ACCA from UK, or uh, you've uh, completed CPA from USA, there'll be a certain benefit for you because somewhere in your curriculum and in your course of those courses, you've already covered a few aspects of these topics. The exam pattern, the CISA exam tests the candidate on a series of 200 to 800, out of which the candidate has to score 450 or higher to pass the exam. The exam is of a four hour duration and consists of 150 multiple choice questions. Four hours exam, 150 MCQs, and you have to score 450 or higher to clear it. Now coming to, uh, if you see on the right side of your screen, I've given a certain analysis of, you know, what are the percentages uh, that, uh, percentage of people who clear CISA exam and how many times the paper is uh, held. CISA is a, uh, an exam which is held like two to three times in a year. Per passing percentage is close to 50%, but it has not been disclosed officially by the Institute. So we can't really comment on that. And yes, coming to the cost, it is $1,000. Coming to, if you talk in Indian rupees, it will come to around 75 to 80,000 of INR. So yes, uh, you can say that it's like a one-time investment for you if you want to go for this kind of a course, but it will definitely add value to your profile, to your CV, to your personality. How? Expected job profile. Let's talk about what kind of jobs you can look forward to after qualifying CISA. Internal auditor, public accounting auditor, information security analyst, network operation security engineer, IT audit manager, cyber security professional, IT risk and assurance manager, IT consulting, privacy officer. So if you see, if you're someone who's from the audit domain, not just auditing profiles, various information technology and information systems profiles will be open for you. If you are someone from the IT domain or IS domain, then you can see that these kind of profiles, which can also get you into auditing, are open for you. So keep an open mind when you decide to sign up for the course because you might want to change your career and this course might be your way out. What's great about CISA? CISA is the gold standard in IT audit. Undoubtedly, it's a beautiful course which has been designed with the objective of achieving gold standard in IT audit. So if you have this degree, you will be uh, holding the top-notch certification from a top-notch institute in, if you are working in the field of IT audit or information systems audit. Believing in technology-based audits, it's a technological world. You can't ex escape it. It will grow in scope in the future. So ultimately, if you want to make a career in this uh, aspect of this domain, CISA is a great degree to go for. CISA exam is easier and faster compared to what? Compared to the other certification courses of US that give you an edge over different profiles. For example, you consider the CPA exam or the CFA exam. It's easier and faster for you to take.
all right so if i talk about the bonus content the bonus content is coming right up in the next video so stay tuned i hope you like this video and if you did like it and if it did help you in a certain way give me a big fat like and a good comment don't forget to subscribe to my channel i love recording videos for you this presentation has been uh, you know a result of my hard work and collection of all data so do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more such videos thank you bye bye